from the banks of Dewey Lake, it's the Dewey Pod Monster. All right, welcome back. My name is John, and this is the Dewey Pod Monster Podcast. This is your weekly podcast on consumption and some other bullshit. As always, with me this week is the host of the Dewey Pod Monster Podcast. He is the authority on Michigan craft beer, and his name is Sean. Sean, how are you doing today? I am flabbergasted that there was no, I don't know, pithy uh, introduction this week. You know, I don't, I don't have a good answer for it. I had something, and then I forgot to write it down, so I guess I forgot it. I had it. I, I was about it. to say, I I actually rattled all that off halfway decently this time. Yeah. Besides and, now, and now we ruined all it. That, so. We pulled the curtain back. Ruined it. What we're here for. So, how are you doing? All personal things aside, uh, great. <laughs> all the cell phones. Just makes it. Bull crap aside. Well, cell phones are, they're, they're great when they work. It's just the rest of the time when they suck. Yeah. So. Going back to work tomorrow, so I'm not looking forward to that. But mm. all good things must come to an end. Yeah, well, I haven't been off as long as you have, but I have to go back tomorrow, too, and I'm also not looking forward to it. I was thinking about it. This has been the longest period of time that I've not worked since I've graduated high school. Well, no, I'd say college, some some point in college, so 20, 20 plus years ago. And it's really, it's really weird. It's been two months, and I feel like I'm going to go back, and I'm not going to know like what I do or how to do any of this stuff. I'm sure it'll come right back to me, and I, I think the first thing in the morning is me messaging my boss or setting up a a conference call with a coworker to be like, Hey, give me 15 minutes and tell me what's, what's going on. What did I miss? What's yeah, different? that's probably fair. I mean, we have a meeting right after we get back just from our holiday break, just to kind of talk about what didn't happen over the last week. So I guess it's all one and the same. Catch anything good this week on the uh, old boob tube before we get into this stupid ass topic that we have today. I watched a ton of stuff that I can talk about. I'll just go over it briefly. So I watched. You said um, that you can or that you can't talk no, about? No, that I can't. I actually have stuff this week that I watched. Oh, like okay. I watched two things in the last two days that I could talk about. But I watched a documentary on, it was on, I have a Fire TV. So, you know, you get those recommendations on stuff. And I don't know how this popped up. The The Fire TV must know me really well. But there was a documentary that that showed up on my little strip of stuff called 350 Days. And it's, a, I think I was telling you about this. It's a documentary about what it's like to be on the road as a professional wrestler. And it's, it's, I think it's more about the wrestling business than anything else. It doesn't really get too much into like what it's like, but they talk about stuff like, you know, staying in hotels 350 nights a year and doing cocaine and all that fun stuff. I had a lot of actual wrestlers that you've heard of, which was surprising. I had like George, the animal steel, Bret Hart, uh, Lanny Poffo, who you might know better as the genius or leaping Lanny Poffo, macho man's brother. Had Gangrel, had the guy from the that big wrestler dude that Snake Plissken fights in Escape from New York. He was on there, old as hell. Oh, yeah, yeah. There were just like a lot of people on there. It was really kind of crazy. Some people had passed, you know, since they filmed it. I think it came out in 2019 or something. But it was, it was interesting. It wasn't great, but I figured I should finish it. I think I talked last time we recorded. I talked about a show called The Peripheral that's on Amazon Prime. It's a uh, based on a William Gibson book about people basically going in virtual reality, but they're, they're playing like an avatar that's in the future, like 50 years in the future from the book. And I finished that whole series. That was interesting, but it's one of those shows where you watch it and you are kind of paying it. You're, you're definitely paying attention, but you don't really know what they're talking about. Like throughout the entire series, maybe I'm just not smart enough to, to figure that out again, somewhere to the topic that we have today. So, Chloe, Chloe Grace Moretz, who you said who last time we talked, she's like the main character and she's like a badass in the show and it just doesn't really fit her as a person. I don't know. I guess she was a badass and kick ass, but she has it in her. It's just weird to see her in that role. Moving on from avatars yesterday, I went back and I watched James Cameron's avatar. I don't know. What what are your thoughts on Avatar the movie? Have you seen it? I saw it once and I saw it well after the hype had gone like through the roof and then came back down. So I went into it with far too high an expectation and it, it didn't really do much for me. It just felt like blue cat people running around with, oh, what's his name? I usually like him. I can't think of his name now. Giovanni Ribisi and Sam Terminator Worthington? guy. Yeah, him. Yeah. Just felt like cat people plus those two. So. Well, 
Isn't, Sam isn't he is Sam one. Worthington the cap? Yeah, for a while there. <laughs> so I I I really liked it when I saw it originally in 3D and all that stuff. And I kind of want to see the new one. I haven't seen it yet, so I decided maybe I should just refresh myself because I had forgotten like a lot of stuff, especially at the beginning. Like I knew what happened in the movie, but how it starts, I wasn't quite sure about. It's like a story about like deforestation, essentially, isn't it? Uh, it's basically about like strip mining and you know kicking out indigenous people from their homeland to because it's more valuable for them to be you know moved regardless of their beliefs but i same sport different team i really liked it again i mean it's like this sounds stupid to say i got like goosebumps watching the movie i thought i just i really liked it i liked it the first time i liked it it's kind of my kind of action movie i guess and then today i got my 12 year old to watch the glass onion with me which was like a huge crowning achievement because I wanted somebody to watch Avatar with me, but she watched Glass Onion. Do I need to watch the first Knives Out movie to understand the second one? No. I've never watched the first one. No, the only thing that's, it's a whole different group of people. The only common character is Daniel Craig, who plays, geez, what's the the detective character, which I can't remember his name for some reason right now. No, no, he plays a Southern, like, detect, not like an investigator detective. St. Norbon. Not a, uh police detective but no i mean there's only like one reference that they really make to the first movie Mm. but yeah you could go into it super fresh not knowing anything because it's a whole totally separate story no characters except for like i said daniel craig is the only one that's still in it uh yeah i really like that too i liked ryan johnson i liked knives out quite a bit so this was a really good follow-up i I enjoyed it quite a bit i actually like right well i only can think of two movies of his that i've actually seen but i liked them both which was looper i don't know why i feel like that doesn't get enough credit for how good of a movie it is and i'm in the camp that really liked the last jedi so of the that was the second one right yeah that was the one where they tried to stop making every story about the skywalkers and then everyone got pissed off i like that one i just didn't like the whole casino side story thing that happened i'm not claiming it's a perfect movie by any stretch but as far as like what we've gotten from Disney since they've bought them, I've liked it with the exception of Rogue One. I've liked it more than anything else they've done. You should check out you should check out a movie called Brick that Ryan Johnson directed. It's okay. Joseph Gordon Levitt. It's like this real noir kind of story, but it's like this mystery. I think it happens in a high school and he's trying to usually like him too. He's actually really good in this. I I heard recently Mark Marin WTF podcast had Ryan Johnson on, and I had never seen what Ryan Johnson looks like. I don't really know much about him. I thought he was a young, like a younger looks like guy. Like an extra from Weezer. He's in like his forties, like or maybe close to fifty. I thought he was like in his thirties for some reason. I don't know why. I thought Brick he made in high school, like he was just out of college, but he was like thirty or something when that when he made that so hmm. yeah it was a really surprising kind of interview but that's a that's a good one if you like kind of that whole noir mystery kind of thing i think he's a better like say he's takes so much shit for the last jedi for better or worse like that it almost overshadows everything else he's done and like i said as far as i know i've only seen those two movies of his but the first knives out looked good and i just i never got around to it and then you know you forget about it and then all of a sudden there's another one out and this one looks good too i just Again, haven't gotten around to it yet. Anything else you've caught up on over the course of this long week? Isn't that enough? It's a lot of stuff for me. Well, that's not YouTube. Yeah, I did a bunch of that too. Nothing worth talking about on that though. But I mean, we haven't behind the curtain. We haven't recorded since right before Christmas. So I have a couple of the over the top Christmas movies that I caught over the last couple weeks. Like I watched. (laughs) um, Tell us. I thoroughly. I thoroughly enjoyed Violent Light Night. I don't know if you saw that one yet or not. I, I we talked about this the other day, I think. I didn't see it. It's one of those dumb but thoroughly entertaining movies. Could easily have probably 15 minutes trimmed off, and I would say it's like a damn near, I don't want to call it perfect, but a, a much better movie if they did that. But if you just like kind of a modern, mindless action violence movie, it's got that with a little bit of Home Alone mixed in, which is pretty good. Christmas Bloody Christmas, which was a Shutter movie that came out, which I found time to watch over the last week, which really is just like murder by numbers, like Robot Santa goes and kills essentially everything. Yeah, like, you know, one of those. It's fine. I I'm, I wasn't mad about it. It's relatively short. There's parts where the dialogue drives me nuts because it's very Kevin Smith-like, just on and on and on about fucking shit that I don't care about. Even when it's shit that I do, like they're talking, they go on a like five minute dialogue about my favorite band 
because these imp- people are own a record store. And I'm so like, shut up, get to murder Santa. Tell me the band isn't called My Favorite Band. That's their a- absolute name. Their first album is called My Favorite Album. I, I don't know if you're being serious or not. I'll, I'll assume that you are. I'm not. Oh, so. okay. All right. Good. No. If there is a band called My Favorite Band, that's pretty good branding. So. <laughs> and they for, if their first album was My Favorite Album, yeah. it's even better. First track is, each track my is My song. Favorite Track, <laughs> My Second Favorite Song, My Third Favorite Song, and so on. I don't know. I would at least give them credit for it. Got bored this morning and rewatched Machete Kills, which is always, you know, a good, those two movies are just mindless fun for me. And then I, I don't know if I rediscovered or just found it. I, I feel like I might have watched this at some point when it was on TV, but there is a very short lived reality show on the history or it was on the history channel. Now it's on Netflix called Knife or Death, which I think I talked to you about, about this a little bit, but it's commentated by Goldberg. So he's yelling really stupid things about cutting chickens in half and cutting fish in half. And he's he's very intense while well, he's watching these nerds that are dressed up like they're going to the fucking Renaissance Fair like pad up with football pads and football pads and try to run through this obstacle course with their own homemade knives and swords and shit. And they all get winded like 30 seconds in and have a hard time finishing. Is it like a chintzier forged in fire kind of thing? It's actually a, so it is a spinoff from forged in fire. So you don't see these people actually make anything as far as their knives or whatever is concerned, but there is a dude who's there who was a forged in fire champion, I guess. And he has to, like, okay their weapon. And I mean, there's one dude who, like, got a uh, knife from, like, the mall. And he's like, yeah, no, you can't use this. Um, but it's a spinoff from that with the idea of, like, swords and playing with them and stuff. But it, it that's about where the similarities end. Wasn't Goldberg the host of Forged in Fire? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I, I thought he had some knife show he was, like, the host of or something. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did or if it was something other than this, but... Like I said, he's entertaining in this because he's so, well, he's late 90s, early 2000s WWF guy. He's so, like, loud, and you can tell when he talks, like, he's all neck, and there's, like, no anything else going on there, and, you know, it's great. He starts yelling at nothing, and then he gets really perplexed by really simple things, like, that ice is really hard. Like, (laughs) yep, that's what ice does. I don't know. It only got the one season. I would have gladly watched another four, but was not to be. That was a pretty good imp- uh, impression that you did of Goldberg, actually. I'm sure it didn't sound at all like him, but no, I like maybe it. with the uh, the dialogue. Cut that chicken. And then, so the whole purpose of the chicken and the fish is that you're supposed to, like every other like obstacle in this stupid game, you can basically hack away at it as many times as you need to to be able to move on. To, as long as your knife doesn't break, you can just keep hacking away. Mm. Well, they have these like chicken and fish on like a piece of string and the whole point is you have to cut through it with one swipe so a lot of people either don't hit it at the right angle or their knife stall by that point whatever but every single like time it's one of two things oh we've seen that chicken take over too many matches and eliminate too many contestants or oh he cut through the chicken (laughs) moves on but that is by far the most entertaining part of this well no it's not the most but it's one of the more entertaining parts so that's pretty much all I did, though. So I, I obviously, I think half of what I was watching this week was palate cleansing from this dog shit movie that we have as a topic. So we're going to roll right into that because I kind of want to get it over with. So I never really have to think too much about this movie again. I'm going to put it out there right from the get go. This was a recommendation slash revenge play from Podcasts in the Woods. Their host, Gabby, it was very pissed off that I convinced them to watch the movie Bloody Muscle, Bodybuilder in Hell, which for the record is only an hour and two minutes, which is much already better than whatever this shithole is. But as a result of that, we were tasked with doing an episode about the movie Paranormal Highway, which came out in 2017. I could almost stop right there and tell you more about it, and, and it will sound better than if we continued, but I guess we shouldn't do that. <laughs> Crickets. Crickets, yeah. Do you want to read? The, try reading this uh, shittily written plot on this one, or am I going to have to try to do this? I'm I'm a big it's, fan of it's, reading shittily written things, so I can. The grammar on this is about as good as the writing of the script. So I'm just going to read it verbatim as to what it says. There's a short one by Wild Eyed Wild Eye Releasing, which I'm. Oh, Forrest Peterson. So this one is written by one of the directors. 
Okay. Let's so we're going to go with that one. On a peaceful October day, a champ. Let me start that over. Uh, on a peaceful October day, a college team and their coaches depart on a three day journey to a national championship. From the start, strange things happen on their creaky, rented bus. Just after midnight on the third day, they hit something on the road. For the next six hours, in the dead of night, 13 people face their ultimate terror. Trapped and isolated, they must recruit all of their strength and courage and find every available resource to destroy these mysterious predators. What do they want? Who do they want? It's a fight for survival in the still of the night. Again, you're overselling this movie based off this plot synopsis by one of the three fucking directors in this movie. So I'll let you know, you're already aware of this. This is a movie that requires not just beer, it requires whiskey. So I have the bottle open for this because this is just a bad movie. Can, can, so I, make movie an, has, can I make an admission off the bat? Yeah. I don't ever do this. Uh, not admissions. I do that often and emissions sometimes too. But so I, I downloaded this movie. And rather than watch it, I, I put stuff on Plex and that's how we talk about these. You know, we watch these movies on Plex or if they're available on streaming, we do that. I actually opened the file in VLC and played it at one and a half speed so I could get through it quicker. <laughs> so I didn't have to sit through. After about 30 minutes of watching this, I think the scene and I won't get into too There's specific. something that happens. You might as well. It's not like anyone's going to watch this anyway. Nothing happens for the first 50 minutes of At this least. fucking movie. The the scene where they they get to the motel, like wherever it is, and they they show the girls sleeping in the room like one of them has a like video camera or whatever. That was the scene. I'm like, okay, nothing has happened. And I'm just going to go to the next thing. So I just like opened the file and played it at one and a half speed again. So I didn't have to torture myself with this. I've seen a lot of bad movies, a lot, some even worse than this. But yeah, this was uh, this wasn't my favorite. So I guess we should start with the, just kind of breaking down the synopsis. When you hear the phrase, a college team and their coaches depart on a three day journey to a national championship. Yeah. Does your mind go to a fucking debate team or does it go to like any other type of team that might be at a college? If I didn't know better, I would think it would be any other kind of team, maybe a basketball team, 13 people. You know, I don't Football know how many team. people on a well, there's more than th well, a football team would have a lot more, but I'm thinking like like a basketball team. You know, you have you got like I don't know how many players are on a college basketball team, but you know, 13 sounds about right. Five only play at a time. Sure. I do not think sure. of debate. No. And this three day journey, it felt like it took me three days to get through this movie, even though I watched it while I was working and getting paid. And I think I even said to you at one point, I'm glad I'm getting paid right now because I don't know if I could get through this movie otherwise. It felt like an actual three day movie. Even at one yeah, and a half speed. It, I believe it. So that leads us, you know, we mentioned that one of the directors wrote that synopsis. There's three fucking directors in this movie, and not one of them knows the goddamn word cut. Well, they're all related. I it's So none family. of them learned the word cut? No. They, they didn't problem. learn that. I've talked to the Peterson family. Uh, I talked mm -hmm. to the father, gran uh, grandpa. That's their dad's name is grandpa. And I said, do you know, that he's like, we don't, we don't teach our kids the word cut or stop or enough. Or why start? Right. This is shit. Don't do it. Yeah. There's so many things in this movie that like, I, I don't even know if it's worth picking apart piece by piece. Like they do these little, like, I don't know if they're actually five minutes, but it feels like a five minute intro for every single character where they almost go like real world on them and like ISO cam them in front of like a bed sheet. And you get this little like five minute, like life story about each one of these characters, which I guess it's an attempt at character development, but I could tell you by the end of the first, like, 10 seconds, I'm like, I don't care about this. Bring on the paranormal shit. They're like confessionals. They're like real-world yeah. confessionals. They they sit and they kind of give you a little intro of the character. I love that the fact that this movie, the way that they kind of set this movie up is that it's like a documentary. Like, they got a grant, so they have this documentary. It's very found footage. Yeah, looking. it's a found footage style movie, so we should get that out of the way. But it's filmed in a way that it's like a documentary where it's like a guy has a camera and the bus somehow they rented this bus, but they've rigged it up with all these lights and all these cameras. And so it can look really poor. It's really poorly done. And they can get away with it because they can just say, well, it's a it's a documentary or it's a found footage of a documentary that they're making. So, you know, kudos to them on on figuring out a way to to make an excuse for why it looks so bad. But it's yeah, it's bad. So I, I have a potential gripe with that, because as I was watching this and kind of 
you know, mind wandered and tried to find something better to do with it. So I granted, I don't know how accurate this is, but there was a budget for this on IMDb. So take this with a grain of salt if I can find it again on here. I wrote it down too. I believe it's sixty thousand. Uh, estimated sixty thousand dollar budget. Yeah. So not that I let's just forget about the story and what you didn't like about the movie I'm about to mention. But if you can make a movie like Terrifier for thirty million or thirty thousand, mm-hmm. how, how the fuck do you have something that is this bad for twice the budget in about the same time frame? Like I think Terrifier was twenty sixteen, this is twenty seventeen, so not that far off. I mean, it seems moderately inexcusable. And yeah, it is 60000 was the estimate on this. And that sounds like you're just wasting like a college education. Someone could, any one of these directors could have gotten a half-assed college education for sixty grand, and still made a better documentary about failing out of college or something like that. There's a bigger crew. I'm sorry, not a bigger crew, a bigger cast in this movie than there is in Terrifier. The cast isn't getting paid. Right. And everything, there's a few people, I looked through all the people on here and all the cast, and there's only a couple that have done other things. One of them, one of the police detectives. So the story's told in this different kind of flashback situation. There's like two parallel stories going on. There's the story of the, the school, the debate team. And then there's the police that think, you know, they're, they're commentating on how the government is trying to shut them down or the, the feds or whatever. And one of the police, the male police officer with the bad hairline, he on his IMDb picture has a totally different hairline. So that's for another day. But he actually has other credits. And if you look on his bio, it's like, oh, he's starred in all these things. And he's been like, he's one of those guys that show up as one episode is like toilet flusher number two on CSI or something. And, you know, not to random thug number six on law and, and order. not to, you know, berate anybody because everybody has to make a living for do something. This is your dream. But everything in this movie, it's as if they did one take and they're like, good enough. Let's move on to the next thing. Like, we actually have three days to film this. We don't have three days that this movie is also set up as, but it's we have three days to film this movie. So one take. Everything's one take. Plus, like, you know, they had a budget because they somehow managed to get the local Papa John's to sponsor this movie. They actually got them. You didn't miss the. No, well, I don't oh, in know. The but there's actual in the thanks or something. No, like there's actual product placement with Papa John's. Like there's a, you might have been in two X speed. No, or whatever I, the, at this the point, the professor, the one the of the coaches is thing. like, yeah, we can get the local Papa John's pizza. Yeah. And then they have the Papa John's guy show up in full Papa John's uniform and like makes them all like pray to his dick of Papa John's at the same time. It's like Schne- another John like. Schnatter. <laughs> it's another six minutes sh- scene that should have been like two seconds where they happen to have a Papa John's box in frame, but they actually give Papa John's a starring role, which I don't remember when he got, he lost his bit as like the, you know, official NFL pizza yeah, guy. of shitty NFL pizza or whatever, but I'm pretty sure he was still the like NFL guy at 2017. So if the actual corporation of Papa John's knew they were so prominently featured in this movie. I feel like a big part of that $60,000 budget would have gone to paying off Papa John's to let them use it. And the, the pizza guy never gets money. Like he shows up and he has all the pizzas that. and they're all like worshiping at the, as you so quaintly mentioned, worshiping at the dick of Papa John. They never pay him. He just like drops his pizza off and he stands there for a while. I noticed they don't eat any of the food in the movie though, because they go to a diner at one point and no one eats there and then no one eats this pizza that they're like enthralled with either. Which in fairness, Papa John's is pretty shitty pizza. But if I'm a college kid, if there's pizza in front of me, I'm eating it. They got the garlic butter, man. I mean, can't beat that. It's like a sore dick. Can't beat it. It is definitely a sore dick. I don't know about beating it or not. So uh, of all the characters in this movie, who do you dislike the most? The kid with the puppet. I think his name is Carlos. I think that's a unanimous. I think that's that's across the board. I mean, the whole cast hated him, too, it seemed like. He gets blamed for everything. He's with them the entire time, and they're like, Carlos. Carlos did it, man. You went through all our bags. It's bullshit, Carlos. You're fucking dead, dude. And he's like, I was with you. With this puppet at the same time. No, the puppet was on the bus. It got. No, he carries that puppet everywhere. Except when he goes to eat at the diner. Did it get alien splooch on him? Because I didn't notice that. Maybe. I don't understand. There's a scene in here. So what basically happens is there's like a ghost or something that's haunting this bus or this truck, basically, or whatever it is. And I don't understand, there's a scene where they kind of show that the ghost is kind of malevolent, right? He's like a little bit of a mischievous or it, and it just moves stuff on the bus, like it pulls stuff on the floor. And they have this really spooky music, 
And I don't know, it's just, just moving stuff around on the bus. Like what's, what's to be afraid of it moving stuff on the bus. The scariest thing, and it's not scary, but like the only, the weirdest thing this ghost does is like jizz all over the bus randomly. That's about as bad as it gets in this three day, like haunted trip that they're doing. I mean, this whole ghost comes about because they hit something on the side of the road, which I'm pretty sure if you're Florida man driving a bus from Florida to where were they going? Like Texas or something like that? Birmingham, Alabama. Even worse. So if they're going from Florida to Alabama, I don't think Florida man stops to see what he hit. I think you just keep going and hope for the best. Oh, ding dong, ding ding dong, ding, man. We'll just just hit something. Check it out. I mean, Boomhauer would probably check. Boomhauer's a Texan. He's not a uh, Florida man. Good Boomhauer, by the way. Thank you. Oh, ding, 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 never, <laughs> never, never done today. I don't know. This, the, the idea of like trying to talk a story about this movie is just really pointless. There is no real story to this. It's literally 13 people on a bus. Occasionally, some of them walk off the bus and don't come back. <laughs> At some point, they realize if you come off the bus, you won't come back. You, you must be dead. And I'm like, fucking go outside then. Let's get this shit over with. Can we just end this um, thing? Let's go. The only other thing that really happens in this movie is, oh, there's a pregnancy announcement, which really doesn't add much of anything. It's just like, oh, okay, moving on. The guy seems and so then, excited about it, by the way. Oh, man. Guess what, everybody? She's going to have a ba- my baby. Hey, good to hear. Have, let's slap some pizza together like we're, like we're clanking glasses. Slap. Yeah, no, you don't do that. The only other thing that really happens is at some point they find a pistol on this, like, ransacked school bus that they stole from the local poverty, you know, elementary school. And I think it's the pregnant chick who's shooting, if I remember right. No, but one, she, of the, one of the students, one of the debate team is an ex-military. Oh, uh, is that what she is? Yeah, she I was like, yeah, she said that she couldn't go to college and she went into the military to get the GI Bill or something. And she, yeah, so she's on the debate team. It's a key, it's, so they're traveling from Key West. Key West College up to Birmingham, Alabama for the national championships of debate. So it's this cast of characters, you know, there's like a religious, super religious chick. There's like the guy that's a a boy genius who's like pre-med and he graduated high school at 13 or something. He's supposed to be 17. He looks like he's about 29 or so. There's the husband and wife. That's one of the, the wife is the pregnant one. There's the puppeteer who's the alternate Carlos. There's the documentarian doing the whole thing. There's the guy who drives the bus. There's the two coaches. There's the person that bought the the CD with all the sound effects that the movie plays throughout the entire thing. He got it from somebody selling CDs on the street and it has, you know, plays like the same screams over and over. The Speaking of sound effects, I know this is kind of going off a little bit, but the noise that the ghost or the monster or the spirit, the paranormal highway creature makes, it just sounds like a squirrel. I can't, I'm not even going to imitate it. I was going to. I was even making the face to it, do it. I thought they lifted the sound off a video game from that era, and I can't remember which one now. Well, but like it Conker's sounded, Fur Day, Bad Fur Day or something? Something like that, yeah. Anyway, so this, this chick is his gun, and she immediately starts unloading, like, left and right. Predictably, she hits someone on the bus, like, the med shocker. student. Couldn't yep. have seen that coming. Yeah. Totally never saw that coming. But... She's firing so much that I start playing the counting game. Like, actually, this is the only thing I backed up. I was like, how many shots did she just rattle off in this little, like, ghost jizz rage that she's going on? And then she also managed to find the unlimited ammo code and start finding extra clips so she could continue to shoot wildly throughout this bus. It's a ghost. Convenient. When have you ever heard of somebody shooting a ghost? You're going to kill it again? I'm gonna Maybe ki- I'm scooby I'm gonna kill you, you fucking but, ghost. I don't know. I really feel like the only way this could have been made better is if they change the title of this movie from paranormal highway to the boo cocky bus because i think that would have been more appropriate i mean that's all that really happens is some stuff gets splooged all over this bus you see a couple flashes outside and then i like the guy who he's the on the debate team but he's also on the track team and when the bus breaks down he's like hey how far is did you say we were from moccasin falls or whatever it is florida and they're like three miles he's like i can do that easy in 15 minutes i'm gonna go run and it's pitch black and you see his flashlight and he's running and then it's just like the flashlight falls down and it never it just gets swooped up by whatever it is the flash of light on the outside i, know, I think the biggest problem well of the many many problems with this movie the biggest problem with it is there's really no like source source of enjoyment in this movie most bad movies or things that I I would think is would commonly be considered a bad movie 
has something in it that is so either poorly executed that it's funny over the top that you just kind of look at and say, what the fuck was that? Or it's just entertaining on its like ludicrousness to begin with. This fails at all that. Like it is poorly executed, but not (laughs) in a way that's entertaining. It's poorly acted, but not in a way that comes off as funny. It's just obnoxious. Yeah. There's really nothing that happens that you can say like, and this movie's terrible, but that scene where that dude's head explodes or, you know, whatever. Looked cool. Yeah. Whatever the case is, there's nothing like that. There's no payoff to this. And there's no story here that's worth a damn to kind of tie any of the like non-interesting things together. There's a lot to be said for movies that are so bad. It's good. And like you said, poor, you know, poorly executed, but funny or poorly acted, but funny. And it hits all the check boxes for poorly. The but, poor side. Yes. Yeah. But none of the funny. <laughs> it doesn't get any of the funny checkboxes yeah. there's just shots of randomly driving there's like a time there's a timeline that they'll put at the bottom of the thing to tell you what time of day it is on what day there's actually one Who at cares? the beginning at the Who beginning of the cares? movie in the first like 30 minutes it has the same time stamp and they're like in two like day one 12 30 p.m they're in one place and then later in the movie 12 30 p.m they're broken down they, this thing breaks down all the time but it doesn't seem to like it just doesn't seem to be a hindrance or anything there's one point where the bus no, it's breaks, like it breaks down. down and they just take a nap. It breaks down. The guy calls somebody he knows that's going to bring him an alternator and it gets there. And then the bus starts up. He's like, oh, I'll just throw it in the back. I'll take it with me. <laughs> really? The only positives I can give this whole movie. I like that. There's their made up school mascot is a velociraptor for some reason. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that yep. on their neon yellow shirts. I'm all for like dinosaur usage in pretty much anything past that. Not that this is a reason to give a movie like a positive bump, but you can't even be like, oh, the lead actress is really attractive. At least that was easy to look at or you know, something like that, like something totally superficial and stupid. It doesn't even have that going for it. The big thing, the note that I wrote, there's two notes, the last two notes. There's a scene where the camera guy, he's got his camera outside and it like falls on the ground and they kind of show this angle of the camera on the ground and it's like filming the pavement. That camera has amazing battery battery life. It stays on for days, and it's just recording stuff. I just wanted to mention that. The last thing I have on my list of notes, nothing ever happens. That should be the no. name of this movie. It shouldn't be Paranormal, Paranormal Highway. It shouldn't be, you know, whatever. It should just be nothing ever happens. And then when you see it on IMDb, nothing ever happens, and it gets 2.1 stars, then you're like, oh, well, I guess I know what I'm getting in. What I'm in for, nothing ever happens. Right. Yeah, the only other things I really wrote down with this, two things that kind of go together. I, I like that. I do find it kind of funny that on several occasions you'll see an actor or an actress just totally flub a line and they just keep going or reread it in the same sense. Like they don't cut, they don't edit over it. They'll be like, Harold, can we go to the pool? Well, Harold, can we go to the bus or something like that? And they just leave them both in there. Like they don't even try to fix it. That's moderately entertaining in that like shitty way. I do like that after they figured out that if they leave the bus, they're going to get like paranormal jizz on or whatever. Yeah. But then the runner guy says, let's go outside and push the bus. Like, yeah, just go push a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that down. So apparently that must have happened at some point. In it. Other than that, I mean, I wrote a bunch of shit down, but it's mostly just me complaining about the same things we've been going on about for a while now. This movie really makes me feel like there wasn't really a script and they were supposed to. This is like the worst improv troupe of all time they were like let's you know we heard curb your enthusiasm is all improv like ad-libbed they have a general outline let's do that let's just we can do that seems easy let's just do that and that seems like what that's what they did Curb your enthusiasm is good and then it just well yeah well they're not very good at it i mean they're they're the worst improv (laughs) team of all time so they just go out and they they just say things it just doesn't seem like there's any there really was much of a script. And like I said, everything's so yeah. one take that when you say that they flub a line, they're just like, uh, uh, I'll uh, take two. You know, I'm surprised we don't get any like, take two. Let me redo that in the middle of a scene. Oh, I did write down that it's kind of funny that the idea of framing up a shot is just like, throw that the fuck out the window early in the movie. There's, so, especially with those two detectives that you talked about, they just, I'm assuming it's probably shot on the phone because it looks like it's shot on like an old Galaxy 3 or something like that. But they just leave this like shitty camera on the counter. They're actually like kind of hunched over to be able to get into the frame when they're talking to it. And then you get up and start walking around the room and arguing with each other or whatever. And no one ever moves the camera to keep that in frame. They just 
sit there like with the camera roughly like at torso to like crotch region and just let you listen in on this weird conversation. Well, it's funny you mentioned that there was this weird trend in like YouTube videos where everybody wanted their footage to look quote unquote cinematic, cinematic. So they would do things like, you know, anamorphic lenses where it stretches the picture out. So there's no black bars. Yeah. And there's actually a scene in this. I wrote it down because I was like, really? I think it's like around the hour and 18 mark where they're on the bus. The top of the footage, the top of the, the video has a black bar, but the bottom doesn't for the beginning of the scene. And then the black bar just I suddenly that. appears. Yeah. Like, okay, you're trying to make it look more cinematic. I understand that that's what you're doing. But the this is supposed to be found footage. It's supposed to be just some guy filming a documentary. And the guy's super creepy. He's constantly hitting on the religious chick. It's just weird. Like, he knows her. There's They, they don't really say how they, they know each other, but... or. I don't know. They they know each other from town or something. It's just really weird. The guy's really creepy. It's a documentary. You don't have to be cinematic, quote unquote. You can just have it regular so you fill up the whole screen. It's it's ridiculous. And then when you make a glaring issue like that, it makes it even it it's like a it's like putting what's that shit you put on fucking cold sores? Carmex. It's like putting Carmex on a on a cold sore. Like why don't you just put a big red arrow? It just makes it glow. Yeah. yeah. I don't really have. A, I mean, I I don't feel the need to really bash this incessantly. Do you have much to add? Before no, we get I think that this is going this? to be probably one of the shortest episodes we've ever done. It probably will because it's that just enthralling of a movie. Nothing ever. Happens. You want to go first, or you want me to go first? You can go ahead. I'm not even going to like pull punches on it. Like this is about as bad as it can get. This is one of the few movies I can't even give you a redeeming reason to sit down and try to watch this movie. So I'm giving this one hot dog out of 10 loosely, poorly salted alien splooges because there's really no, nothing you can really say about this movie to make me think, yes, I need to go back and watch that or that I would suggest anyone else would ever watch that. I don't care if you like found footage. I don't care if you like aliens. I don't care if you like ghosts. This has none of those things. The only thing it has is shitty camera work, shitty acting and shitty effects. And it's just shit. And there's nothing that pays off on it. And that's all I got. When I rate a movie, we do it on the hot dog scale. I like to kind of give things like not everything's a, a nine or a 10, right? Not everything's a one or a two. There's a lot of stuff that goes between. Most you know, things aren't. Most things go between, you know, let's be honest, probably goes between a four and a six. Like that's a very fair rating. And when you look at it and you see somebody gave something a six, you're like, well, they must have hated it. But, you know, no, I mean, a six is that's average. It's right six in the middle. Fine. It should be. Yeah. That being said, I would give this one hot dog out of 11 uneaten Papa John's pizzas. Like you said, there's no redeeming quality. There's no, it's so bad it's good because there's not enough funny stuff to outweigh the stuff that's just so bad it's bad. I'll say, I've said it once. I'll say it again. Nothing ever happens. They, we should be able to edit titles in IMDb and just change this to say nothing ever happens. And that's the name of this movie. So you know not to, if you do watch it, you're like, well, the title's nothing ever happens. So if I watch it, I mean, at least Seinfeld, it's a show about nothing, but you can't say it's like nothing ever happens. This movie, Paranormal Highway, nothing ever happens. The end. Can we call it nothing ever happens, colon, Bukaki bus? <laughs> paranormal activity, or geez, I wish it was paranormal activity. Paranormal <laughs> highway, colon, nothing ever happens, semicolon. Boo, what did you say? Boo cocky, boo cocky, boo cocky bus. Boo cocky bus. There we yeah. go. That works. Got to have the boo in there because it's paranormal. Yes. Yeah. You know? Boo cocky, the scariest kind. <laughs> I mean, that's already more entertaining than the, the, what this movie turned into. So, if if that this movie was called had that long title of Paranormal Bus, sorry, Paranormal. I keep calling this Paranormal Bus, which I still feel like is a better title. But uh, Paranormal Highway colon nothing ever happens semicolon the boo cocky bus i would give it two hot dogs just off the title and we talk about movies you know if they're under an hour and a half it instantly earns a five. Oh god and then it has to do something really bad thankfully this movie just clocks in at over three minutes over that hour and a half i feel like i was watching this and as it got closer to the end i was thinking this still says it has like 10 or 15 minutes to go and then the credits come on and the credits seem like they were really long so I do think this was initially made for some kind of, I don't know if it was a mini series or like a, a made for TV movie, but it's got a TV 14 rating on it, which I also thought was weird. So 
again, I don't know why you would shoot something like was this going to be three half hour episodes? It doesn't seem like it would line up for that either. Yeah. But hmm. that might explain the runtime a little bit, but it's still fucking stupid. I was looking at IMDb and this is the featured review. The t- I'm just going to read the title and kind of crib it. It's a, they give it one out of 10 stars as well. And I agree with the title road to nap time. <laughs> That's the title of the, of the review here. And I have to agree. Like, I don't even know if I could sleep. It was just so, it was just like, it's annoying enough not to let you sleep. Like, that's the kind of movie this is. Like, you're not going to sleep. Pretty much. I mean, these reviews are kind of entertaining. Wow. Bad. Total crap. Well said. <laughs> I well concur. Well said. Well said. I don't, like I said, I think that's about it. Do you got anything you want to add before we start wrapping up on this long episode? I don't think, oh yeah, long the longest episode. There is nothing redeeming to say about this movie. And I was always taught, if you don't have anything nice, anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Well, in the meantime, then, I'm going to find a much more entertaining movie to recommend for Podcasts in the Woods. Next suggestion might reach out to phone a friend for help on that one. Anyway, don't watch this movie. Go watch something else. Go watch Violent Night. I don't care that Christmas is over. It's way better than this. Go watch um, Bozo the Clown. Anything. (laughs) (laughs) But while you're doing that, we would appreciate it if you subscribed to us, left us reviews, sent us feedback followed us on social media all that good stuff i'm probably forgetting something but do all the stuff that we usually tell you to do and then sean's going to tell you where you can find him and what we got going on the other side of stuff so you can find me at draft dot com dot so you can find me at youtube.drafttherapy.com <laughs> uh, i had a little bit of reboot there i had to do but you can find me there this we we're filming this we're recording this we're recording this in january i am filming my cellar dive you can go back even if this goes out in february you can go back and check out some cellared beers that i checked out you can also find more about me uh on the back page of the newspaper or at the social media networks that you frequent at draft therapy that's it that's all we got um yeah bukaki bus bad paranormal bus Ooh. we'll talk to you Tom Hanks with a cat. We'll talk to you next week. Horrible. 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 Horrible.